I find that so many able-bodied people don't think they're a part of this conversation about disability. If you have a body, this conversation is about you. It is for you, it will impact you. And the world you live in will be totally different if it has space for all bodies. I only had about six months to participate in the queer community as an able-bodied person because I broke my neck in the same year that I came out. So my queer and disabled identities have mostly existed side by side for most of my life. Being disabled in the queer community is tricky because we just never talk about disability in the queer community. <laughs> In terms of erasure, like think about the last time that you saw a post during Pride Month that had anything to do with our disabled LGBTQ siblings. Nothing. That's really problematic because disability intersects with so many other marginalized groups because if you're marginalized in the area of, of your sexuality or gender identity, that automatically means that you're going to have less access to healthcare. Less access to healthcare means greater incidence of disability. And then greater incidence of disability means greater likelihood for poverty and unemployment because of discrimination in those areas. And it goes on and on and it snowballs. So we can't advocate for the queer community without including disability. We will always fall short, always. So it's hard showing up in those spaces knowing that no one has a, ever talks about someone with my experience. So I just don't have the experience of being seen or being understood as a gay man who's disabled. When I had the paradigm shift around my body, that it's whole and complete the way it is, it totally set me free. So that's when I got into coaching, transformational education, and then more naturally just activism and speaking and making these paradigm shifts happen inside of disability specifically. It was so life altering for me. It felt like there was no other work that I should be doing except for sharing this, sharing the good news so that other people could experience freedom in their bodies too. Disabled people and able-bodied people alike. You are a whole and complete human being and you always have been, even though you live in a world that constantly tells you otherwise. You're whole and complete. So live that way. I also just got angry and I was just tired of people wondering if I was like sexually viable. And so I was like, yeah, I am. And I'm gonna talk about it and I'm gonna make it clear that disabled people want sex, have sex, we want relationships, we want romance. And it's all available. It's just a conversation that needs to be had. And then also, I think that being explicit about it is, a, is an expression that, hey, this is okay to talk about. Hey, I don't feel below my chest and I experience orgasm and climax differently and sex might look differently. Um, and I'm owning it by telling you exactly how this is. I remember looking up like gay, paralyzed disability, like trying to find anyone who had a similar experience to me online and there just wasn't almost anything or anything that was actually of value to me. So I had to go out and really deliberately explore and give myself my own sex education, both as a gay man and as a disabled man. I also think that disabled sex is so much better than able-bodied sex <laughs> because there aren't any assumptions. So often the, the idea is sex looks like this, you do this, I touch that, you whatever, and then that's how it goes. And I think that actually disability opens up a conversation that's inherently can be somewhat vulnerable, but requires communication uh, and requires people to say, actually, I need this. Actually, this is how it works for me. Because able-bodied people need that too. 
Sharing all of that is consistent with the way of being that I want to create in the world, which is nothing's wrong here, I'm valid, and my sexual needs are valid. So like sharing that so transparently is consistent with that way of being. My experience with disability has been very different from my experience as a queer person because I have experienced hate or hostility because I'm gay or queer. But people generally aren't hostile to me because I'm disabled. They just forget about me. So it's almost like death by negligence. It's a different kind of oppression. As I go throughout New York City, or as I roll around in a place that's not accessible, the takeaway message I always get is, I was not considered in the planning of this city or in the planning of society, really. Just, I was forgotten here. Someone forgot that people like me can't get in if there are steps. There's no amount of grit or determination that will turn a flight of stairs into an elevator, right? It just doesn't happen, it's just not reality. Anyone who has the opportunity to age in life will most likely have a disability at some point. Like all human beings, if you have the opportunity to live a long, beautiful life, your body will probably acquire a disability. What that means is people like me who were born with an able body or without a disability can become disabled. And that's an important piece to know about disability because as we advocate for disability, we have to have this really broad view of the fact that while we're talking about disability, we're talking about the nature of human bodies and we're talking about all people. And it's also informative to know that when we make a world that's inclusive for people with disabilities, we also set up a world so that any human body can participate at any time in its lifespan. So I am principally trying to advocate for a shift in how we view disability so that we can see disability as being on a spectrum. That anybody, any body, has body function, certain function, ability, and that that ability is valid wherever it is on the sliding scale of ability. That individual has a worthy body, and that body is worthy of access and inclusion. We mostly see people with disabilities as being broken versions of, of their able-bodied counterparts. My body is not who I am. This is a container that is supporting me through life, and I'm really just proud of it for the work that it continues to do. And I think that all of our bodies are generous and hardworking and miraculous.